All right, Lauren. Yes. Lauren, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, I grew up in Carson, California. Suburb of LA? Yes. And tell me about your, your parents, your family. Um, well, I got adopted at birth. Um, my biological mother was six months pregnant with me and she, um, she died of a heroin overdose. Uh, they were able to get me out of her stomach. I was two pounds, two ounces. Uh, the doctors gave me 30 minutes to live. Uh, I was on the incubator, um, life support for nine months. I died twice as an infant. And then um, the nurse that uh, nurtured me back to health ended up adopting me. Uh, I got adopted by a Mexican and white family. And um, so I grew up with them. Um, at the age of five, my adopted dad died. And then two years later, my adopted mom died when I was seven on Mother's Day. Wow. And so um, I have two adopted brothers and one adopted sister. My adopted sister took legal guardianship um, from the age of seven to 12. She was quite a bit older? She was older than me. Uh, they were all older than me. And um, so what happened was when I was 10, my adopted sister's boyfriend uh, molested and raped me and sodomized me and beat me um, for two years straight from the age of 10 to 12. And um, my nephew, um, which is my sister's son, uh, I basically raised as a as a, a bigger sister to him. And um, the boyfriend, I call him the monster, uh, was trying to fondle on him. So I would tell him to run to our secret uh, hiding spot and don't come out till, till um, I get him. And so I was basically like a sex slave from the age of 10 to 12 and um, and so what happened was when I went to school, elementary school, we um, wore. Um, so so you, were, you were doing that to protect him? Yes, I would jump in front of him to, to save him, you know, so I would get punished instead because he's two years younger than me. So uh, one day when I went to elementary school, uh, we had to, wear um, uniforms and I was wearing a, a skirt and um, I had bruises and welts in between my thighs and uh, one of the staff seen me and, and said oh my god it took me to the nurse's station and they made me get undressed and uh, once I got undressed she covered her mouth <sighs> like that and she started crying and then I started crying and she asked me what's going on and I broke down and told her. So they removed me from my sister's house and um, from the age of 12 to 18, I've been in and out of foster care, um, group homes, mental institutions uh, for adolescents, um, a runaway, um, I started to be promiscuous at the age of 12. Um, I started selling my body by the age of 15. Um, I started at dancing at house parties. And then um, I got introduced to pipping and hoeing. And then so I started selling my body at 15. And um, when... Um, when I turned 18, the foster system, DCFS, basically kicked me out of the system because I had a, a bad, a bad um, background. And they never told me anything about um, like independent living and, you know, going to school. You know, um, 
I could stay up to I was 24. They didn't tell me none of that. So when I turned 18, they kicked me to the streets and um, uh, I became homeless. Um, I'm 32, about to be 33 next month. And I ran homeless uh, since the age of 18, living in streets, prostituting, um, selling dope, game banging. And um, I have three children. I have uh, two daughters and a son. My oldest is with my adopted family. She's 13 and my son is nine. And my youngest daughter is eight and they both are adopted out um, due to domestic violence and uh, my drug usage. Um, when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, um, I smoked dope all the way till I gave, till my water broke. And um, when I went to the hospital, they seen that and they took her away from me right away. And so I had visitations with her uh, up to three months. And when I went to go see her, uh, they told me, did I get the message? And I said, no. And um, they basically said, oh, she got adopted and I never got to say goodbye. And now she's eight and I don't know nothing, um, anything about her. And my son, uh, I haven't seen since he was 15 months old. I wasn't using with him. Actually, when I lost custody of him, um, that's when my whole life turned upside down. I started smoking dope a lot, slamming, um, just being in the streets. And I became pregnant with my youngest, London, right after him. And um, my daughter's dad was abusing me the whole time, feeding me dope and uh, holding me hostage. And um, I took out all my anger out on my daughter and I've to this day it haunts me because you know I never grew up with no mother figure um, and so it hurts me to just to know that my daughter's out there and I have no idea if she's okay or not and um, I'm still struggling with uh, my drug addiction and um what is your drug crystal meth and sherm and um i've been slamming for eight years now and um i've been smoking meth since i was 15. and so um for me to get my drugs i prostitute myself to get by and i panhandle and um i went to prison when i was 18 for stealing out of stores to survive. And um, they violated me the first week. Uh, I was eight and a half months pregnant with my oldest daughter. And um, the first week I was there, I gave birth to her. So I had her at uh, Riverside Regional Medical Center. And so my adopted cousin came and got her and she's been having her since she was three days old and my daughter's 13. I've been absent out of her life nine years. I've just barely been in her life for three years now, um, trying to get back what I lost, you know, all the times where I've been running the streets, chasing at the guys, getting abuse here and there. And thankfully my daughter, um, tells me that she loves me and she just wants me to be okay. And um, I'm just trying to find housing as we speak. I sleep in tents. I, I go to different hotel rooms here to there. Um, I have to give my body up just to spend the night. You know, it's very uncomfortable. But um, yeah. And my birthday's gonna be next month on the 4th. I'll be 33 and I'm just tired of living this life. Um, 
I want to do better for myself, you know, if uh, I don't stop with the drugs and stuff. Uh, eventually it's going to kill me because I have a lot of health problems. I'm overweight, I'm diabetic, I'm asthmatic, I have sleep apnea, scoliosis in the back, and um, it takes a toll on my body, you know. So I'm just very thankful that I'm alive and well. You know, I'm a very spiritual woman, and even though I've been through a lot in my life, I know God has a plan for me, and all I need is to continue to have faith in Him, and everything will work out. Your your childhood, that was before your parent, your adopted parents passed away. Was that you felt you were loved then? Yes, um, my adopted mother, she loved me. She she saved my life. She nurtured me back to health and. I believe God took her on Mother's Day because she done she did her job as far as helping me, you know. This was a nurse at Yes, at the a nurse you were born at, at the hospital. And um she was born uh April tenth, nineteen thirty two. So she'd be in her nineties right now. And um just recently, a couple of days ago, my adopted brother just passed away and um so uh I'm still grieving from that you know I don't really have my family in my corner due to my my choices of my background of my choice of living in the streets and stuff so they kind of washed their hands on me so the only ones that I have support is my cousin, her husband, and my daughter. And um, yeah, I'm very thankful that I, I have them because other than that, I, I would have nothing. And um, I'm trying to find my biological father, but I'm getting older, so it's kind of getting pointless. I'm getting kind of frustrated at the time because I'm like, I was a lost cause, you know. Um, My sister's boyfriend robbed me of my innocence at the age of 10. But unfortunately, um, they gave him a double life sentence and he got murdered in prison. And um, so that's one thing I don't have to think about anymore, you know. But my sister is still out there and one of my other brothers is still out there. And so I'm really lonely, you know, and I choose to deal with different kind of guys to um, cover me, you know, because I'm very vulnerable. And and it's kind of disturbing because I have to give my body up just just to get that sense of companionship for the moment. And I know I'm better than that, but Thank God I don't have no HIV or AIDS or anything. Um, dis- despite my diabetes and stuff, I'm pretty healthy for the most part. And I just take it one day at a time. What, what emotions do you go through? This has been such a hard life for you. I go through ups and downs for the most part. Um, I'm depressed a uh, majority of the time because I'm like, why me? You know, I have a good heart. I give back to people. Um, I go infinity and beyond, you know, to help others. Even though, like, they dog me out, they disrespect me, they treat me like boo-boo. And, and, you know, I just take that time to just know that I'm a better person each day. And I, and I strive to fight for what's right. You know, I'm an Aquarius, so I'm very, uh, intellectual person and, uh, I'm a natural born leader. I fight for what's right. And I just keep on trugging every day, you know, as day goes by, I just pray to the Lord that 
um, I would stop my addiction and that I would get in somewhere. I just talked to somebody earlier about getting emergency housing. And so she said she would call me tomorrow um, at two to three o'clock to give me an application to fill out, to see where I can go from there. But from now, I sleep in a tent and I go different spots downtown. And it's really scary because I don't have no boyfriend or nothing. So, what, you know. What, what, what do you worry about? What, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of dying in the streets all alone. Um, I don't have no ID. I don't have no social security card. You know, I have a phone. But um, if something bad were to happen to me, it's like I'm a lost cause. You know, I'd be another Jane Doe. And that's my most fear of like something bad happening to me out here while I'm trying to get my life together. So I just pray and I just take one day at a time. Is this like your lowest point right now? Yeah, I'm at rock bottom because I'm like running out of options and like I'm tired of living in these streets, you know, I'm getting older. My my daughter is getting older and it's like, if something doesn't open up soon, I don't know the outcome, what it'd be, you know? And I don't wanna be another statistic, statistic, statistic out in the streets, you know, another Jane Doe. And I wanna be somebody, I wanna, I would like to go to school. I, I want to do American Sign Language. Um, I would like to be a mentor to troubled teenage um, foster kids, just to give them hope that there is another way out other than prostituting, gay banging, having kids early. You know, nobody saved me when I was in foster care. So. That's one of the things I would like to do is give back and save somebody else's life. And I think that would save me, you know, um, overcoming my biggest fear is becoming a nobody. You know, I just want to give back to society and just, just show them that there is love and there's hope and there's, there's, you know, there's a different kind of life out there rather than what we know. And if I can tell my testimony and it save a person's life, then I know I did a good job. You know, I even want to write my own book. It's gonna, it's gonna um, call "Take a Walk in My Shoes," um, and my biggest. Um, my biggest role model is Dave Pelsler. He wrote the book, A Child Called It. And ever since I wrote, read that book, it kind of gave me inspiration to tell my story and to let people know that just because we go through things doesn't mean we have to become monsters or, you know, become evil and that there is success out there for us as long as we're willing to take it. Um, I don't think this is the end of the road. I just don't know when there will be a breakthrough for me. So I just, like I said, pray every day and just take one day at a time. Yeah, you've had so many rough breaks. Do you, yeah. do you feel like life is unfair? Yeah, I feel like life is unfair because First off, my mother took the easy way out. You know, she she didn't make it and she left me um, struggling for each breath that I take. And I have a lot of mental uh, problems and a lot of health issues. And I'm just thankful that I'm alive, you know, cause I could have been gone a long time ago and I, 
I, I believe in the higher power and I know God has something in store for me. I just don't know when. And he's been, he's been holding on to me since I came out the womb, you know, I'm a natural born fighter, you know, and it takes a lot from a person to fight each and every day. And that's why I know that there's something good going to happen through this, you know, um, as long as I keep fighting for what's right and, and taking the steps to, to becoming a better person, I think God will open doors for me. I just got to be patient and just sit back and be still and um, not allow people to, to break me down even worse than I am because I am vulnerable and it is hard for me to say no when it comes to drugs. I'm not as strong as I should be, but I'm working on myself. What, what do you think the biggest factor was in your, the situation you, you're in today? Was it your? Well, I strive because of my daughter, you know, um, she gives me hope every day. Yeah, but what, what do you think was the biggest setback in your childhood? Um, just not having no love, no guidance, no support. After your parents passed away? After my parents passed away, it just went downhill from there. My adopted sister, I found out she was getting beat and, and raped too as well. So she threw herself in at work. She was an RN nurse at Harbor UCLA um, have Hospital. You, have you ever had jobs? I never had a job. Um, I'm on GR, by the grace of God. Um, and they're working on my SSI as we speak now. You've been living on the streets for how long? I've been on the streets since, uh, since the age of 16, but legally 18. And I'm 32 now. What would yeah. you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, just be myself, no matter what happens, no matter what comes my way. I know God wouldn't put nothing on me that I can't handle. So I take that and I run with it. You know, um, every time I get knocked down, I dust myself off and I just keep on trugging because I know if I, if I dust myself off and I keep on going, something has to happen good, you know? But as long as I lay there and I feel sorry for myself, then I'm not gonna get anywhere. All right, Lauren. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you so much. Yeah, you should write a book. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.